Dave Morelli here from Tactical Gear Magazine. We're out on the range in the last stages of working up a load for this 22 250 rifle. You know, having a precisely machined rifle bedded in a rock solid Macmillan stock such as this one here, topped with a quality scope like the Leopold Mark IV, this type of rifle deserves uh, the extra care and time it takes to precisely reload ammunition for it. Today we're going to talk about powder and how to select the proper powder and the weights that you want to use and how to develop the load that's right for your rifle. I recently built a varmint rifle in a 22 250 caliber. I wanted a long range gun that would go out to the coyotes. Uh, some of my coyotes hang out in the fields, in the hay fields, uh, out to five to seven hundred yards. I was planning on working with 69, 77, and 80 grain bullets in the 22 calibers. So when I built the rifle, I put an eight twist heavy barrel on it. What I'll cover here is the points of safety, how to figure out where to start with a load, and also we'll work with the uh, RCBS powder trickler and scale. Some points of safety when you're reloading. Um, you you got you to gotta double check yourself regularly. If you make a mistake here, you could damage your weapon or injure yourself. Totally unacceptable. Double check the loads that you're working with. Make sure you got the right powder, the right bullet, the right primer. Always start with reduced loads and work your way up. Whatever the book recommends or start somewhere there and work your way up and look for the signs of pressure. I load five rounds of a starting load and I check them out and I see how accurate they are and run them through the chronograph and I'm looking for uh, flattened primers, head signs of head separation which would be a shiny spot at the base of the case. Uh, things like this will help keep you from getting into trouble. The other thing is the things that I'm using for a particular load is the only thing that's on the bench. I'm loading Osler 80 grain bullets. That's the only bullet that's in front of me. If I'm priming and I'm using a Winchester large rifle primer, that's the only thing that's in front of me on the bench. That'll keep you from sticking the wrong component in the wrong uh, case with the wrong powder charge. Okay, so where do you start? Every re reloader should have at least one reloading manual. They list calibers and have recommendations as to which powders are preferred for that caliber. They will give several powder choices and uh, for each load and highlight loads that should be the most accurate in that configuration. One of my favorites has always been the Lyman reloading manual. If you're reloading Barnes bullets, you might want to have a Barnes manual. Uh, today we're going to be working with uh, an IMR powder that's produced by Hodgkins. We're going to use their reloading manual to figure out where we're going to start. All these manuals usually have a place for you to write down your notes and you, it's a imperative that you keep good notes. Do not commit this to memory. Keeping good notes will keep you informed on what works, what doesn't work, what was getting too much pressure. And if you don't have a, a spot in your loading manual to keep notes or if you prefer, have another little notebook that you keep notes of your loads. Very important for accuracy and for safety. Selecting a powder this time for this rifle was easy for me because I wanted to use this newly introduced 8208 XBR. It's designed for bench rest and varmint shooters and it's indifferent to temperature change. Very important when you're coyote hunting, you, you sight in at uh, 50 degrees above and you're hunting coyotes in five below. It, it's not supposed to affect this powder. It's a fine grained extruded powder. It's newly introduced and it's not in some of the manuals. So I'm going to have to go to the Hodgkin manual. Um, Hodgkin introduced this IMR powder and they have it in here with a variety of loads. I used this manual and I went to the 22250 section. The problem is the highest grain bullet that it shows loads for with this powder is uh, 70 grains and I'm working with 69s, 77s and 80 grain bullets. It's not a problem. I started with the 69 grains because I wanted to test them anyway. That's close enough to 70 and if you start at your reduced loads, you can work it up to where you want it. Once I had that information recorded, then I went to the 77 grain bullet and 
I used my data to start with a reduced load and work up to the 77 grain bullet and then I did the same with the 80 grain bullet and each time you test the bullet you check for pressure and keep an eye out for all these warning signs of excessive pressure. I use this RCBS powder measure. It trickles the powder out to a preset uh, granulation that's in the program. One thing that I do is whatever powder I have inside here I keep right here on the bench behind it so that if I come here three or four days later I know what powder is in here because I have it right here on the bench. Okay once you have the charge measured out you're going to pour it in the case. I work out of the box. I prime them all, size them all, put them into the box I take a primed case out, I use a funnel, I got my 29 and a half grains of 8208 XBR, pour it in there, make sure it all goes down, and then I seat the bullet. And it goes back in the box ready to go. Lots of guys charge them all and then seat them all, and that's okay. I work out of the box, I do them one at a time. Now there's a group anybody would be proud of. That uh, is a three shot group uh, at 100 yards from the 22250 that we've been working a load up for. That's what you're looking for right there. You know, powder selection is an important part of precision shooting. Keep at it, try a variety of loads, and soon you'll get your rifle shooting good groups. Well, there's nothing more fun than taking an afternoon and coming out and starching a few of these squirrels in the field. It's good practice and the farmer will appreciate you. Just make sure to ask for permission on private land. I'm Dave Morelli. Be sure to keep your computer tuned in to www.tacticalgearmag.com for more information on how to improve your precision shooting and other tactical shooting and competition. That's all for now. I'm going to shoot a few more squirrels.